In this talk, um, I was hoping to lead the audience to try to have some fun uh, with bitwise operations in Elixir. Um, it's, uh, so the coding examples are in Elixir, but, um, but, but really bitwise operations is uh, not um, language specific really. It applies to any language that um, allows you to do those operations. For those who are not familiar, bitwise operations are a form of operation that uh, operates directly on individual bits. If uh, that feels a bit abstract, don't worry. It's, it's, the whole, it's the topic of this whole talk. So I'm going to go back to it over and over again. So the hope is by the end of this talk, you will know uh, what exactly it means. Okay, so many of us would want to ask this question, why do I want to know this? And I think it's a fair one. As web developers, we don't need bitwise for our day-to-day -day work. But I would argue that knowing bitwise is, is useful uh, in many areas and it can be super handy if you run into one of the, uh, their use cases for example, bit fuels, uh, communications protocols, uh, embedded systems, or something fun. Uh, we'll look at these examples in more detail from the next slide. And also they are performant. Um, from the Elixir uh, documentation for a bitwise module, uh, there's this uh, sentence uh, where it says, uh, all functions in this module are in line by the compiler. So um, at the end of the day, these, these uh, operators or, or functions are not really functions. They are in line by the compiler to something that's more performant, that's um, uh, to a lower level, I guess. In, in general, but in general, uh, so that's Elixir specific, uh, that uh, like how those are in line by the comp compiler. But in general, whatever code we write in whatever language, at uh, the, the level that's just above hardware, is all about manipulating the bits, which, which is what bitwise operations do. They are at the lowest level uh, that you could get in software. So the performance is also as good as you could possibly get. Uh, okay, let's look at the use case examples. Um, Flag Shizu is, implements bit fields for active record. And uh, uh, in this documentation, it says an extension for active record to store a collection of Boolean attributes in a single integer column as a bit field. Uh, here is a real world example from my previous workplace. So at this point in time, we had uh, 22 Boolean fields uh, in, in our rules app, which, which I think is a lot, but they are stored in the database as one single integer column. Um, so that's kind of uh, best of both worlds. In the database, we save space. Um, and in rules app, they act just like normal fields. And, uh, and also when adding new flags, um, you don't need to worry about migrations, at least for, for a long time. So that's bit fuels. And uh, next we have communications protocols. There are many of them actually. And uh, one of the most common is TCP. And its header looks like this. Essentially, a TCP packet is a, a basically a stream of bits. And uh, so the first 16 bits is the source port, and the next 16 bits uh, is the destination port, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, all the bits in these relative positions have specific meanings. So say, for example, we wanted to create a library for converting a TCP packet into a struct. So we, we, we have already got a, such a struct for representing TCP packets. 
then as you can imagine, uh, we'll need to, to use bitwise operations in, in order to, <coughs> to do that conversion. And then uh, embedded systems use bitwise operations extensively as well. So this is a picture of a, a du at Arduino board. Um, so when playing with embedded systems in general, uh, conceptually, I'd like to think of hardware as something that provides a bunch of um, registers that are mapped to a memory space and software have access to that memory space. Uh, for example, the third bit of a register uh, might control a LED, uh, say, on, on this board. Uh, setting, setting it to one will turn, turn the LED on uh, and the clearing that bit or say set, setting it to zero uh, will turn it off. Uh, that that uh, mental model is not entirely accurate, but, but close enough. And at least that's, that, that was how I was thinking about um, hardware um, in general back in the days when I was working as an embedded systems engineer. And uh, yeah, something fun. Next, we have retro games. If you are into retro games and you would like to tinker on a system like Nintendo um, Entertainment System or NES, bitwise, uh, bitwise operations would be your friend. So I've got this YouTube uh, clip I'd like to share. Um, it's not working. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I, I've got it open in here. Don't think the sound's coming through. Oh, you guys can't hear the sound? No, the sound's not coming through. Oh. I guess that your sound oh, input I see. is your uh, microphone. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my sound output. Uh, just give me one sec. Sorry. Awesome. It turns out the, the Nintendo only had eight uh, possible buttons, which fits really well in white. <laughs> so it turns out um, when you press a button, it just toggles a bit. And if you press two buttons, well, it toggles both bits. And so what you can do in assembly is you could read uh, the right memory location, and then you could do um, bitwise uh, operators to like see if a button's pressed or not. Pretty cool. Uh. Okay, uh, I'm not going to play the whole clip. Um, so, but, but anyway, um, you need a bitwise operations for the control of the video games. Um, yeah, I hope uh, those examples convince you that bitwise operations are actually useful. Please keep in mind as well that those are just a few examples and there are many, many more. Um, so now let's go through uh, the, some of the basic uh, bitwise operations. Um, I'll, I'll cover these four. So bitwise or, and, not, and shift. First up is bitwise or. Um, what it does is in this table. Uh, so X and Y here are both a bit, and which, which could be either one or zero, as you may. So, so one uh, or one is, is one, and uh, zero or one is one. One or zero is one, zero or zero is zero. As you may have already noticed that this is very similar to uh, the Boolean or operation. Uh, in fact, if uh, you replace one uh, with two and zero with uh, false, they, they, they're exactly the same.
So um, next, we wanted to talk about the properties of uh, bitwise OR operation. Uh, so this is the first slide with Elixir code example. Uh, in order to use bitwise operations in Elixir, we needed to include this use statement. And um, that, that would bring the bitwise operators in, into the scope. It also comes in two flavors. Uh, the one that I personally prefer is operators. So that's why I'm including this. The other is uh, uh, skip operators, which will include the uh, function flavor. At the end of the day, they are, they are all functions, but they are all, again, um, in line by the compiler at compile time. Uh, but in the subsequent slides, I'll omit the use statement just uh, to make it uh, more succinct. Uh, please keep in mind though, it's always needed uh, if you wanted to use bitwise operations. So here, X is a bit and, uh, and uh, <coughs> which, which could be one or zero, of course. And then doing bitwise or with one uh, is always going to get one. And uh, bitwise with zero always get uh, X itself. Next, we've got a bitwise N. Um, similarly, we've got this table um, and uh, it's, it's again, very similar to the Boolean end operation. Um, next, we've got uh, the, some properties of uh, uh, the bitwise end operation. Again, X is a bit and uh, doing uh, bitwise end with zero is guaranteed to be zero, no matter what X is. And um, doing bitwise end with one uh, basically preserve uh, the X, no matter what it, what it is. So these properties of uh, bitwise or and bitwise and are actually super useful as we'll see slightly later. Next, bitwise not. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, uh, this, uh, this thing starting with zero B and followed by zero one, zero, zeros and ones, uh, is how you write literal binary number in Elixir. And uh, the three tutors is the bitwise not operator. So this one is actually uh, simple. Bitwise not just flip the bit. If it's one, uh, turn it into zero. If it's zero, turn it into one. From this example, we can see uh, bitwise literally means to apply the same operation uh, bit by bit. In this case, the operation is flip a bit. And then we get the result uh, with every bit flipped. Uh, bitwise shift is the last basic operation uh, that we are going to look at. So you could shift to the left, uh, say by one. So this is the the number that you want to shift, and uh, this is the uh, sh left shift operator, and uh, this is how by how many bits you want to shift, and then you get this, or you could shift it to the right. Again, this is the number, and then sh right shift operator, and then we are shifting by four bits. So uh, the top, the top half of this byte become the bottom half of this byte. Yeah, uh, I think shift is kind of uh, straightforward as well. You literally just move the bits uh, to a direction by um, the number that you give. Okay, next let's look at the, uh, what these basic uh, bitwise operations can help us do. Here, I'm going to cover uh, three usage patterns. 
uh, set in this context means uh, making a bit one and clear means making it zero. Of course, you could also uh, set or clear a group of this as well. Uh, read is simple. It just means uh, literally read uh, one or more bits uh, from a number or from a bit stream. Uh, let's look at how to set a fixed bit in a number. Say we wanted to set the second bit of this binary number. Um, oh, we, we've got this table uh, where X is the original number, Y is, a, um, is another number that we construct with only the second bit as one. They are listed uh, in two columns uh, from the top, um, the highest uh, bit to the lowest bit at the bottom. And uh, again, we perform uh, bitwise or um, one row at a time, and then we get our result. From uh, the properties of uh, bitwise or, we know that doing or uh, with zero keeps uh, the original bit. So, so everything apart from uh, the second bit is going to be exactly the same as they were before. And uh, we know that doing or with one uh, will set the bit. So that's why uh, now we've got the second bit set. So basically uh, in the number format, we got this. Um, so this, this uh, number that we construct uh, is sometimes referred to as a bit mask. Uh, it's nothing fancy really. It's just a, a number uh, with some target bits, in this case, the second bit set that, that will help us perform certain operations on the target bits and let other bits pass through. So, or we could do this and uh, this doing this, uh, uh, shift uh, to the left one, shift to the left by one, you actually get this, uh, this uh, mask that we have used. And um, that's actually how we construct a bit mask. Doing this allows us to set an arbitrary bit, uh, in, in, say in a byte. Uh, for example, we'd like to set the nth bit of this number then what we do is uh, we construct a bit mask by shifting one to the left by n minus one, and then doing the bitwise or operation with the original number, then we will be able to set the in bit. Also, we can set a group of bits, say for example, uh, we'd like to set the second to the fourth bit of this binary number. Um, we can, again, construct a bit, bit mask by shifting uh, one binary one, one, one to the left by one, and then doing um, bitwise or with the original number. Then we get our result uh, where these three bits are set. Next, let, let's look at uh, clearing, clearing a fixed bit. Um, say we wanted to clear the third bit of this, this number. Um, yeah, similar to setting a bit, we have the original number and the bit mask uh, shown uh, in two columns. And then again, we perform bitwise, uh, this, in this case, bitwise hand. Um, and then we get our result. So from the, from the uh, properties of bitwise hand, we know that uh, doing end with one preserves the original bit. So that's why everything apart from the third bit, which is zero in the mask, is going to be preserved. And uh, uh, performing <coughs> bitwise n with zero is guaranteed to uh, clear that bit 
and uh, that that's basically what we want. So the third bit is clear, and everything else, every other bit, uh, is preserved. So we have this. This is the mask, and then we perform bitwise end to get our result, uh, in which we have this third bit um, cleared. Uh, again, uh, we we wanted to be able to construct this bit mask, and uh, this is a how, how to do it. We shift uh, one to the left by two, uh, which will get a uh, mask uh, with only the third bit as one. Then doing the bitwise knot, we will get a, this this mask where uh, every bit is one, but the uh, third bit is uh, zero, which is what we need. Okay, again, uh, that allows us to uh, clear a arbitrary bit in a say this byte. We start with uh, constructing the bit uh, the bit mask by shift one shifting to the left by n minus one, and then doing a bitwise knot, and then we perform the bitwise end with the original number. Then we get our result. Um, also, we could uh, clear uh, more than one bit as well. Say we wanted to clear the top three bits of this binary number. What we do is uh, um, construct a bit mask by shifting to the left by five because uh, it's from the six bit. And, and then doing a bitwise end with the original number then we get what we want, uh, where the top three bits here, 101, becomes uh, all zeros. Where, uh, and also all the other bits uh, are exactly the same as they used to be. Uh, okay, now uh, that's done with uh, setting and clearing, clearing bits. Next, we let's look at uh, reading a fixed bit. Say we wanted to read the fourth bit from this binary number. Um, what we do is, is this. So we have a bit mask where only the fourth bit is one. Everything else is uh, zero. And then we perform a bitwise end. So in, in the result, every bit apart from the fourth bit is guaranteed to be zero. So if the final result is, uh, is, is not zero, then that means uh, in the original number, the fourth bit is not zero, which, which is one. But in this case, uh, it, it is zero. So the result will be zero as well. So that's how we read a fixed bit then we can read the, uh, the, an arbitrary bit as well. So how we do that is by creating a bit mask again, uh, which looks like this, shift to the one shift to the left by n minus one, and then perform a bitwise n with the original number, and then we compare it with, with zero. If it's more than zero, then the nth bit is, um, is one, otherwise it's zero. Uh, we can also read a group of bits. Say, for example, we wanted to read uh, the fifth to the eighth bit from this, this binary number. That's essentially uh, the top half of this byte. Uh, what we do is, again, create a bit mask by shifting binary 1111 to the left by four to get this. And then we perform bitwise end with the original number. And, and then we'll need to shift it to the right by four. Uh, 
that, that's because we wanted to get this. Um, so they, there are four bits uh, the, that we wanted to read from, uh, which, which means that the value that, that we are expecting range from uh, zero to 15. Uh, so we wanted to get back uh, in decimal 10 rather than without the shifting uh, decimal 160. Okay, uh, with that, we conclude uh, our bitwise usage patterns. So far, we have uh, covered a lot. Uh, how, how about we apply this newfound knowledge to solve a coding problem? Um, I know this group loves exism challenges. Let's do one uh, called um, secret handshake. Just in case you don't remember the problem, here it is. Determine the action of a secret handshake based on the binary representation of the given code. If the following bits are set, include the corresponding action in your list of commands in order from lowest to highest. So these are the uh, binary codes and uh, action strings. And uh, for the fifth bit, uh, we wanted to reverse the order of uh, operations. So in order to solve this, we needed to figure out uh, whether each of the lowest five bits uh, is set, which is the last usage pattern of bitwise operations we just covered. Um, here's, here's how to read uh, the first bit. Basically, you do a bitwise hand with, with uh, the, a bit mask where only the last bit is set and then compare to the to zero and uh, the second and the third and etc. So, okay, now let's look at the code. So the module secret handshake and the empty um, function named uh, commands are given to us in the template. I, in here, I just added the use bitwise statement. Um, next, we define the mapping, the mapping between the lowest four bits and uh, the action string. Um, and also included the fifth bit, which, which doesn't really map to a string. So the value doesn't matter. Um, so I put new in here. Uh, we'll see how uh, this will help us in the next uh, couple of slides. Uh, next, we define a guard. Um, of course, we, we could use this directly in, in the code as well, but, but I personally like to capture what it does uh, in, in a name. So in this case, I call the guard uh, bit set with quest map, which is kind of typical. Uh, then it comes the function body. I'm just uh, using a enum, a single enum dot reduce function call, uh, which iterates over this actions um, map that we defined earlier. The reducer is a is an anonymous function with uh, multiple function heads. These two here uh, collect action strings. So uh, if, so this mask will match with the code here, and then the action will match with the action strings. If a particular bit is set in the code that we are given, then we will add the action to the accumulator. Oh. By the way, the accumulator starts with a empty string. Um, or if the bit is not set, then we just return the uh, accumulator as is. That, that is, again, how we collect the action strings. Uh, OK, the last piece to the puzzle is to deal with the fifth bit. Uh, in here, we are. Um, we are pattern matching on this value directly. And we, again, we don't care about uh, uh, this uh, new value here. So we are ignoring it. 
So if the fifth bit is set uh, in the question, uh, in the challenge requires us to return the actions in reverse. But here we are, we, we are returning the um, accumulator directly. And that is because uh, for performance reasons in here, when we are collecting the actions, we are collecting them in reverse order by prepending the, uh, the current action to the accumulator. So when they want it, want it in re reverse order, we already got it. Uh, whereas if they want it not in the original order, uh, by not setting the fifth bit, then we'll have to do a reverse for the uh, action strings that we have collected. Okay, that is the solution to this um, exism challenge. So that's literally uh, 20 lines of elixir um, with, with, I mean, without uh, the empty lines, which is uh, quite concise. And also I would, I would think that uh, it's uh, reasonably clear what, what it does. Yeah, okay. So now let's summarize. In, in this talk, uh, we covered a lot of grounds. Uh, first, we start, started with uh, some common use case examples of bitwise operations, and then uh, covered uh, uh, the basic bitwise operations, including uh, or, and, not, uh, and shift. Then we look at three uh, usage patterns for bitwise operations, like setting, clearing, or reading one or more bits. And then lastly, uh, we, um, we applied this knowledge to solve an exism challenge. So my purpose to this talk is to spark some interest in, in bitwise. You, you don't have to remember everything uh, that's mentioned in this talk. That's, yeah. But, 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 but I do hope that uh, uh, you can start putting Bitwise uh, as a tool in your toolbox and then start recognizing uh, if uh, in the future you actually encounter some of the use cases of Bitwise operation, then you remember, oh, there's this thing called Bitwise uh, and I, I can look up and uh, potentially use it. Um, yeah, cool. That's pretty much all I have. So I've got a, I've got a, this as reference. Um, I also found this, found out this, this video. Again, if you are into uh, stuff like uh, retro games, uh, here the, the part one of this uh, video series uh, actually have a nice overview of uh, this. And he has a NES emulator, and also it uh, specifically talks about uh, bit, bitwise basics as well. Check it out if you are interested. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, everyone. Any questions? Okay. Any questions for Ching, or is everyone a bitwise expert? Looks like people got it covered. Um, I just got a question. Sorry. It took ages to find sure. the button. Um, could you do everything you do with bitwise uh, with pattern matching on... on uh, uh, Bit strings. Uh, so maybe so bitwise. These these operations is about uh, say for example you you've got a number. Uh, say you wanted to extract uh, a group of bits for example uh, to into another value. So when you say pattern matching. Are you, so, so what are you trying to achieve? 
So if you uh, have, uh, you want to find out what the fourth bit in an eight bit byte is, then you could pattern match to just extract that fourth bit, couldn't you? And it'd be either a one or a zero. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that, that's true. You, you could do that. And, and, and same by, to set it, you would just construct, construct a... Um, a bit mask. Yeah. But, but I don't think you could uh, set or clear uh, by using pattern matching though. You, you, okay. you are able to extract uh, certain bits by pattern matching, uh, but only from the left, uh, sorry, left most left side of the binary uh, number or stream or whatever you have. Right. Yeah, the, the trick as well with that is that um, <clears throat> you can pattern match in binaries, like a, which is a string of binary digits, whereas bitwise is for operating on integers. So they're kind of slightly different use cases. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but 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 you are right. Uh, you you could if you are you know how many bits from the left you wanted to extract, then you could uh, also use uh, pattern matching, but binary pattern match. But but bitwise, uh, with bitwise, it doesn't matter where the bit is that you want to extract. You don't even need to know beforehand. Uh, it could be passed in as a uh, say n or whatever, as an argument. Yeah, uh, basically you, you construct the correct um, bit mask and then perform the operation, then you, you got what you need. And also to, to read one bit at a time, you would uh, 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 mask with a, with a one and then right shift to get to the next bit and mask with a one again. Uh, well, so the reason I didn't do that is because, uh, uh, so if you are reading only one bit, so it, it can only be either one or zero. So by- So you wanted by, to read, read all the bits uh, to separate mm -hmm. sort of, uh, you know, for, for separate flags. Um, how would you do that necessarily? Sorry, uh, I, I didn't quite understand what you mean. What, what do you mean by So flags? each bit in an eight, eight bit byte is a different flag and you wanted to find mm -hmm. out the status of all the flags. Yeah, but you still needed to do that uh, individually, right? You, you, or you, you could use a uh, binary pattern matching to extract uh, all eight bits at once as well. Or you, you could uh, uh, construct eight different uh, by, by shifting one to the left, uh, um, zero to seven times, you, you construct the seven, uh, sorry, eight um, bit masks, and then you, you perform the bitwise end and then compare the result with zero, then you know, uh, respectively, each base, uh, are they zero or one? Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, uh going to try and use some nerves for, for something. So uh, I'm going to be uh, getting into the low levels of a CAN bus. <laughs> cool, cool. Glad to hear that. That sounds like a future talk. Yeah, assuming it goes anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Cool.